started. I welcome you all for the session. In this session, I'm going to teach you what is a virus, worm, and Trojan horse. Once again, I repeat the topic. I'm going to teach you what is a virus, worm, and Trojan horse. So today's objectives are: so we are going to see what is a virus, what are the types of virus like pile infector virus, food sector virus, multi-party virus, macrovirus, and what is a worm, and what is Trojan horse. So what is a virus? So virus can be anything. It's a special program which affect or infect the performance of a computer and insert their own course. Here we can see a lot of definition for virus. A computer virus is a special program that duplicate by itself and insert their own code. So what it will do when your computer is infected by virus, it will duplicate by itself, okay, so that it will spread your entire computer and it will insert their own code. So it will not the task which was assigned by us, insert it will work on its own code. A computer virus is a piece of code inserted in a real program which corrupts or delete users' data. So it's a piece of code, it will be enhanced along with the real program or attached to the real program. What it will do, it will corrupt or delete user data. So virus or the programs to harm your computer by damaging programs, deleting files, reformatting your drives, and affect the efficiency of your computer. So once your computer is infected by virus, there's a lot of possibilities. It will delete your necessary files, program files, or sometimes it may format. Or reformat your drives. As well as it will decrease your computer performance. So, what are the characteristics of computer virus? The virus can easily transfer between files, documents, programs, and computers. The virus can duplicate by itself and hide from users. So, these are some properties of virus. So, it will transfer, it will duplicate by itself. Okay, so it will corrupt the files, document, program files, or computers. And it will transfer from one computer to another computer. And so it will hide from user. So these are some of the characteristics of computer virus. And followed by what is mean by the file infector virus. So from the name, you can identify it's a file infector virus. This type of virus will infect any types of files. Let's say file infector virus easily infect different types of files that has been stored in a computer. As I told you, it will infect only the types of files. The file infector virus is a types of virus that typically attach to executable code. It can spread to other programs. Even into network that utilize the infected files and programs. So what a file infector will do? It will typically convert your code into executable code and it can spread to other programs so that it will affect all the files and even it can travel to the networks in order to affect the other computers. The file infector virus generally will write the codes and convert the files into .com and .exe. So what it will do, it will convert your files into .exe or .com so that you cannot able to open it you cannot able to access the information inside the folder. So this is a disadvantage of file infector virus. Next, followed by boot sector virus. A boot sector virus infects the boot sector or partition table of a disk. It's a boot sector. So you can see the boot sector virus. It's a virus which affects the computer memory. So we have a concept called as a boot sector where we are going to store the data like operating system information and loading programs, which will infect the partition table of a disk. So in, once it is infected, it's not able to access your data. The boot sector virus infects storage device, master boot record. We have a term called as MBR. So master boot record, it will affect, it will infect the master boot record. A boot sector virus is a malware that infects the computer storage sector where startup files are found. So it will, it's an 
malware is a dangerous software which affect the performance of your computer. So what it will do, it will affect the computer storage sector. So where you can find the startup files or operating system files, OS files will be there. Both sector virus are usually spread by infecting floppy disks. So how the attack can be made if you're using any infected floppy disk through the disk, it will navigate to your computer. The attack was made from infected floppy disk. The boot sector contain all the files required to start the operating system, OS, and other bootable programs. So, what are the things will be there in boot sector? It contains the operating system files and other bootable programs. So, once this virus is attacked the boot sector, it is impossible to load the operating system and other bootable programs. A boot sector virus can use a variety of boot or data retrieval problems. Okay, so once your computer has been infected by boot sector virus, you can face varieties of loading problems or data virtual problems. And next followed by multi-party virus. You can see multi means many. Okay, so multi-party virus attacks your system in multiple ways because it's a combination of file infected virus and boot sector virus. A multi-party virus is a hybrid of file infected virus and boot sector virus which attack the boot sector and executable files simultaneously. Since multi-party virus is a combination of file infected virus and boot sector virus, it will affect the both boot sector and file. Multi-party virus are difficult to remove from an infected system since it's a combination of two uh, types of virus. It's very difficult to remove these types of virus from your system. Multi-party virus target the executables.com files and boot sector of infected computer. Since again, multi-party virus is a combination of file infected virus. In terms of file infected virus, it will convert into .com and .exe files, and boot sector will corrupt the boot sector of your computer. Network. So this will do both tasks. Next comes to macro virus. So macro means small. A macro virus is a computer virus written in the same macro language that is used for software applications such as word processing. So there is a language called as macro language. They use the language in order to develop the programs such as Word, uh, PowerPoint, and etc. etc. So this type of virus use the same programming techniques or same programming language. The micro virus can be spread through email attachment removal media networks and internet it is extremely difficult to detect so since it is embedded with programs it is very difficult to identify macro virus so this can be spread how through email attachment or if you're using any removal drives if you're not uh, if you fail to check the virus to removal to drive it will infect or through the networks and internet and it is extremely difficult to detect the macro virus spread quickly as user shared infected documents. When you are sharing the infected documents, the micro virus will start spreading. The micro virus are automatically activated when documents are open because the macro language is embedded in the documents. When you try to open the infected document, the virus program starts automatically with the channel. Since you open the document, so the virus will start at executing. So macro virus is responsible for spreading fake security messages, right? So the fake traps fail. So the the fake uh, security message was spread by macro virus. So the macro virus is responsible for spreading fake security messages. So what it will do, it will spread a fake security message. So what is a worm? A computer worm is a type of malware. So a new software that affects the performance of a computer. It spread copies of itself from computer to computer. So what it will do when the computer is infected by a worm, it will keep on spreading. So which affects the performance of your computer. A worm can replicate itself without any human interactions. Means there is no need for a host program in terms of worm. A computer worm is malicious self-replicating software program, properly termed as malware. A worm operates autonomously. It's very important. In case of virus, somebody has to 
or needed host but in terms of home you need for a host so without the need for a host file or to hide their code on the host computer different worms from other form of malware. okay so virus and worm are probably the same so what is the difference major difference between virus and the whole worm virus is in need of a host but worm no a computer worm is a self-replicating malware that duplicates itself to spread to an uninfected computers. So what, what, what is the target of WOM? It want to attack all the your computer programs as well as it want to spread to other computers. So what is the difference between virus and the WOM? The virus needs an human interaction to execute and spread. WOM execute and spread by itself. Virus attach itself with an host and spread where the host reaches. Worm does not need an host and exploit the vulnerability of a network to spread. So it's very simple, right? So virus need a host, but worm doesn't need a host. So virus need an human infraction, but worm, no. The spreading of virus is low as compared to worm. See, virus, the spreading speed is low, but the speed of worm spreading is fast and it's quickly infected multiple computers on the networks. So these are the some major differences between virus and worm. Next, moving to Trojan Hass. The Trojan can be employed by cyber thieves and hackers trying to gain the access to the user system. If somebody wants to get the users to unknown computers, they'll be sending Trojan Hass so that they can able to access the system. Trojan can be enabled cyber criminals to spy on you, steal your sensitive data, and gain backdoor access to your system. So Trojan hours are used by the cyber criminals to spy. If they want to monitor you, they want to steal your data or so personal information or banking details, they'll be using Trojan hours. And it will give you the backdoor access. Trojan can be employed by cyber thieves and hackers trying to gain the user's system. Same. So, so uh, unknowingly, if they want to access your system, they use this kind of viruses. The most common use of Trojan R's is to gain the remote access to an unsuspecting computers. Okay, so this is a major of Trojan R's. So it's mainly used by cyber thieves and hackers in order to spy and to steal your data on your computers. I think you guys have enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching this video.